the roar of the engine swelling as they as the time approaches when they'll make their way again down pit straight. Actually, uh, the officials have allowed uh, Greg Hansford in the 42 car just to reverse back a little. He's moved one grid position back. Yes. And Masterton has moved over and is starting in the centre of the track to avoid the wet patch. Well, they're going to have uh, cement dust blowing up everywhere and a wet patch on top of it. That's going to be uh, pretty tricky. With the cement dust, it's not going to be much fun at the rear of the field. It's not going to be at all. One minute board. So it starts all over again. There's the view inside the cockpit with Alan Grice in the Roadways Commodore. Just ahead of him on the grid is Peter Brock. And on pole position for the restart of the great race is George Fury in the Nissan Turbo. Half a minute. Everybody, uh, everybody's caught the, uh, the fever now. Possibly happen again. Maybe Wesley. one or two will exercise a little more care this time. Ten seconds away from the start of the 1984 Great Race, Part Two. They're racing and getting away smartly as Peter Brock on the outside. Fury lifts the start completely, and Johnson ranges up on the inside to take over uh, second place as they run to the first corner. Tagging him is uh, Alan Grice and then Fury getting into stride. The BMW is out wide. And then John Harvey making a good start as well as they stream up Mountain Straight. And there's the view of the entire field as it heads off for the first time up to the mountain and towards GTX Ben. Over the top and dropping down to the lip, it's Peter Brock in front, Johnson in second, Grice is third. And look at the challenge on back behind them, the black BMW and Alan Moffat already putting pressure there. Through GTX Bend, coming uphill now, and it's a steep climb up towards the cutting into second gear now, moving up to third. Brock in front, the 05 Commodore Johnson goes through in second place. Then Alan Grice, George Fury, boy, is he going to be disappointed about this restart because he got away really well first time round off pole position, but uh, on the restart, blew it badly and is in fourth spot. Alan Moffat hard on his heels in the RX-7. Over the top they come, sweeping through, Castrol Curve, onto the top of the mountain, hear the crowd roar! Past Reed Park, on down to McPhillamy, take the left-hand curve. And the top three have opened up just a little bit of a gap over the rest. Brock leading them onto Skyline. Down, off the top they go. Through the dipper, into the S's. Linus turn. Nobody gets wide here and survives. Jansen, Cullen, McLeod. Through they stream. The big forward of Brian Callahan in there as well. Through Forest Elbow and for the first time down Conrod Strait. And here they come. They'll be looking for speeds of 260 kilometres an hour or more. Peter Brock, Dick Johnson go by. There's Alan Grice now. Scott, sorry, Fury and Moffat. Into the braking section, down through the gears, and Brock is first on the first lap. Coming Behind across. him now is Dickie Johnson. Two minutes, 20.27, the standing lap time for Peter Brock. Across the strike, Harvey still up on the tail of Moffat and Fury keeping the pressure on as well. In fact, Fury gaining a little on Grice. There's the race leader, Peter Brock, heading up uh, Mountain Straight again. As Dick Johnson not that far back behind him with the green Palmer Tube Mills Falcon. They drop into this lip before they head up to GTX corner. About two car lengths the distance from Brock to Johnson. Five then back to Alan Grice. And the steep climb up towards the mountain. Just look at the climb now. They are under full, full pressure and power. And we join Dick Johnson with Race Camp following the race leader in second position at the moment. And we'll follow him across the top of the mountain. There's Brock just ahead of him. Great pictures coming out of the 17 Falcon. And all listen to that deep-throated roar of the engine. The big V8 as he sits out in pursuit of Moffat. And I'll tell you what, he's going to have to pull something out because Moffat is moving away. Brock, rather, is moving away. Moffat, of course, back in fourth spot in the uh, Mazda RX-7. Grice 
hot on Dickie Johnson's tail in third place. But the day glow pink and white Commodore of Peter Brock is up front. Look at the hands working at the wheel. Dick Johnson throwing the big car down off the top of the mountain through the S's, heading down to Forest Elbow once more. And in pursuit of the race leader, Peter Brock. And Brock is exactly where I think he'd like to be. Dick Johnson settling himself back into the chair and those hands sitting in the 10 to 2 position and lines himself up on the left hand side of Conrad Strait in pursuit of Peter Brock. Well, Brock has got uh, a great start. There you can see the gap. Doesn't need for us to explain. Johnson trying to stay in touch with him and Grice uh, probably about four car lengths back behind uh, Dick Johnson. And behind uh, Grice, of course, keeping the pressure on him is uh, Alan Moffat. Early pit stop for car 64, the Capri components entry, Laurie Nelson and Peter Jones. Uh, their Mustang has got a problem and they're the first to call into the pits as Brock gives them the go-by, followed by Dick Johnson coming up again on the left-hander at Hell Corner. By you, they're about uh, 80 metres ahead now of uh, Grice, then comes Moffat and Harvey and Fury are really having a ding-dong in behind that pair. Following Dick Johnson up Mountain Straight, and uh, you can see the gap widening between himself and Peter Brock. Peter Brock, it's just so easy for this man. Well, he makes it look easy. I tell you what, the hard charger is the second dealer team car of John Harvey. There goes Brock and Johnson. And here they come. Climbing up again through Wilco Cutting. Brock wide there. Uh, Peter Brock pushing it hard Whew, is he ever well Brock goes across the top of the mountain trying to increase that lead getting plenty of support up there from the Commodore fans who have camped up there on the mountain for the last three or four days that'll give you an idea of the gap back to Johnson it's opening here he comes down through the right-hander, Dipper, and there's Johnson, about all four car lengths back behind him. So at this stage, Peter Brock leads the James Hardy 1000 for 1984. 